Good afternoon. My name is Trey Payne, and I have the distinct honor of being before you today to do the fun things that we as the council get to do, and that's to do recognitions of people in our community that have served, people that need to be recognized and to deserve to be recognized, people in our community and in our city that work so hard for you on a daily basis, and those that are willing to give up their time to serve on boards and give back to the community. And so this is the fun part. Um, you know, every day uh, when it doesn't rain, we get to hear that we should water the grass more in the parks. And then when we water the grass in the parks, we get to hear that we're wasting water. <laughs> and guess what? When it rains, then we get to hear that we don't mow those parks enough and we're supposed to control the mosquitoes. And we know that that's that's tongue in cheek. But this is the time when we get to come and not worry about a council meeting and not worry about doing the business of the city, but just to honor you, and that's the citizens of Lubbock. And so we're excited about this. This is new. And so we will see if this is something we're going to do moving forward. Um, this is where we want to try new and explore new options and make it where you're not just rushed through before a council meeting, but we can truly spend time with you, get to know you. And so we'll be around after this to visit with you and talk with you and, again, give you our thanks and appreciation. So because this is, this is a bit of a new format, I will kind of tell you how it's going to go. We're going to have special recognitions first. We will call you up. We will introduce you. We'll take some photographs. And then we're going to move through those special recognitions. And then uh, Councilman Steve Massengale will just go through the board appointments of those citizens that have been appointed to these new boards uh, and are giving back their time uh, to our community to be on these boards. And then we will move into employee recognitions and recognize employees of the city that have done unique things and some that have done uh, interesting things and some that have just given their time and service or won uh, awards for our city. Does that sound good? All right. Well, first of all, we will start with a recognition of the third annual Lubbock Book Festival. Stacy McKenzie. Come on up, Stacy. And members of your committee. First one up. She's like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. And who is this? This is Melinda Gonzalez. She's with Literacy Lubbock, which we partner with. That's great. With the book festival. That's great. Thank so uh, Stacy is the director of the Lubbock Libraries, and she's a member, uh, and this is a member of her committee. The third annual Lubbock Book Festival is coming up on October 15th through the 16th at Mayon Library. The Lubbock Book Festival is great for readers of all ages. Thank you to everyone at Literacy Lubbock and Lubbock Public Library and all the sponsors. We have numerous sponsors involved in this and the authors. We'll be having authors that will be attending as well. Yes. It's going to be a great weekend. We hope you will put that on your calendar. Reading is my favorite thing to do. I actually like to fly fish as well, but I'm not any good at it, so I like to pick up a book. Uh, and we also have a special recognition to present. And with a special recognition uh, that... Now, therefore, the mayor and city council of the great city of Lubbock do hereby recognize the Lubbock Book Festival and encourage all citizens to attend and to support the special event that continues to foster the creation, understanding, and enjoyment of literacy. And that's dated this 20th day of September of 2022. And again, thank you, Stacy, and thank you to the members of your committee. We appreciate you very much. Thank you. have the pleasure of uh, introducing Beth Bridges and Ashley Knox. Where are you, Beth? I saw you earlier. There she is. Okay. You have to come close. <laughs> How are you? Good. Thank you. Good to see you. Well, they are here today representing the South Plains Mall. And I distinctly remember when it opened, I was about six months pregnant. Um, and um, it was the newest and the neatest place in the world. About 89,000, 899,000 square feet, something that the city of Lubbock had never seen. Uh, and I'm not sure we imagined it 
until it got here, but it was a very special place and has continued to be a special place uh, and will move forward in the years to come. So you are here today on behalf of the fact that you've been there, it's actually over 50 years, like, yeah, maybe 51, give or take. And so uh, we have a special proclamation for you. Uh, I'm not gonna read the whole thing because we've already talked about that it came about in June 1971. And so, now therefore, we the mayor and city council of the great city of Lubbock do hereby recognize the 50th anniversary of the South Plains Mall in Lubbock, Texas, and ask all citizens to join us in celebrating and acknowledging the positive impact the South Plains Mall has had on our city and thanking its owners and employees for their many years of quality and customer service. Signed this 20th day of September, 2022, by Mayor Trey Payne and all the members of the Lubbock City Council. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to see so many employees and staff and citizens. That we appreciate you so much. And today we are also recognizing Samantha Favreau and others in the chiropractic, chiropract, chiropractic, let's try that again. I just saw one Sunday, okay? <laughs> and I do love our chiropractors. Sorry about that. This sounds like I'm doing our TV segment. But October is Chiropractic Health and Awareness Month. And with us are a group of local chiropractors, doctors who are creating greater awareness of the benefits of fitness and being active as part of the Chiropractic Health Month campaign. I appreciate this group of chiropractic doctors for promoting good health in Lubbock, and I'd love to have them to come on down. And there they are. And I, while they make their way up here to the center, I am going to read just a little bit, Chiropractic Health and Awareness Month in Lubbock, and encourage all residents to improve their quality of life by utilizing effective pain management and by practicing a healthy lifestyle. And it's dated this 20th day of September 2022 by the mayor and all the council members. Thank you all. Sean, are you coming up here too, Chief? It's my honor today to recognize Lubbock Fire Rescue's 555 campaign. It, I won't have to spend much time describing this and the genesis of this to this group because we all know why and how important this is. It's an honor and pleasure to have Mark Hill here. Mark is the father of father, fallen firefighter Lieutenant Eric Hill, who was killed by a vehicle while responding to an accident on January 11, 2020. Police officer Nicholas Reyna was also killed and firefighter Matt Dawson critically injured. We all remember this tragic day and we encourage drivers to be more careful on roadways. To get this message out, Lubbock Fire Rescue, as well as other emergency response organizations in our area, are hosting the 555 Move Over and Slow Down Rally on Saturday, October 1st at South Plains Parking Lot, South Plains Mall Parking Lot, Beth. First responders, as well as road and emergency workers, serve the public each day, and the work they do, as we all know, is extremely dangerous. Lubbock Fire Rescue's Move Over and Slow Down Rally helps create important awareness to help keep all of our first responders safe on our roadways. Before I say, get into this special wreck, I'll just remind everybody, put your phone down while you're driving. 
Now, therefore, in honor of heroic Lubbock first responders such as firefighter Eric Hill and police officer Nicholas Reyna, who were tragically killed, and firefighter Matt Dawson, who was seriously injured, and in an effort to increase public awareness, awareness of this important law, which protects the lives and safety of all first responders, we, the mayor and the city council of the great city of Lubbock, do hereby recognize 555 Move Over and Slow Down Rally Day in Lubbock, Texas, and ask all citizens to support this event on October 1st to drive safely, to move over, and to slow down for all emergency vehicles throughout the year. It's dated this date of the 20th of September, 2022. It's signed by the mayor and all the members of the Lubbock City Council. Invite the uh, folks here from KLBK to come forward now. You may recognize these as members of the uh, KLBK uh, news team. Uh, Lubbock's uh, station KLBK was founded uh, in 1952, actually, November 13th. Uh, 1952, one month after I made my appearance on this earth. So uh, <laughs> we both share a, a, an anniversary here. And I remember it. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, not when I was born, but I remember how, uh, what an impact. I was not that smart and aware when I was born. But, uh, and I remember that uh, Dub Rogers, the founder of the station, was a mayor of our city. And the story behind him becoming mayor is a rather interesting story as well, which I won't take the time to uh, account here, but he is he was a public servant and that station has meant a lot to this city over the years started out as K-Dub now is KLBK and I love that LBK part of it uh, We'd like to recognize KLBK for all the good they've done in our community for these 70 years It's important that citizens of Lubbock are informed uh, About national events, but also about what goes on in our state and importantly here in our city and you play an important role in that Local news is absolutely vital to the well-being of a community uh, and we've learned that, uh, and it's, it's more powerful now than ever. Lots have changed in the past 70 years. You're still in the same building, though. And I'm sure lots more will change in the next 70 years, and we wish KLBK all the best, and we're grateful for everyone who's helped in that success. And so now uh, we, the mayor and city council of uh, this great city of Lubbock, hereby recognize KLBK's 70th anniversary in Lubbock and express our greatest appreciation for KLBK and all their work for our community dated this 20th day of September, 2022. Thank you all very much. have this next privilege um, someone that I think has been in our TV rooms uh, and on the television for years and years and somehow never ages <laughs> I mean it's impossible uh, that, it, that it happens but it's true nonetheless and um, this is Sharon Maines is retiring if you haven't heard already um, but I get the distinct pleasure of, of having this special recognition for you, Sharon. So if you'll come forward. So she began this uh, endeavor in 1974 when she was a wee child. And for the past 27 years, she's been the anchor of Daybreak Today on KCBD. She was Lubbock's very first female TV anchor. And she worked at KLBK and KMAC before joining KCBD. 
Again, as I said, she's a familiar voice in our homes. Uh, she's one of those bright spots when you wake up in the morning and want to hear a, a nice face. Everything she does on social media is always so positive. And I've seen that over the years. And she's just a bright spot for Lubbock. And I know personally we'll miss her very, very much. Thank you for all that you've done for Lubbock. Thank you for all the years you've committed to Lubbock. Thank you for sharing Kenny with us at times and the music. And Kenny, thank you for sharing her with us. She's been a pleasure for us. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that. But we do have a special recognition for you. And by stating it is appropriate to recognize you uh, for your passion for the community, your outstanding work for Daybreak Today and KCBD, and the numerous years of service ensuring that Lubbock residents and viewers, not just here but all across the South Plains, receive exceptional and positive media coverage. So therefore, the city, city council and the mayor of the great city of Lubbock do hereby recognize Sharon Maines and encourage all citizens to join us in thanking her for her dedication and service to Lubbock and wish her a happy and healthy retirement filled with grandkids and fun things that allows her plenty of memories for the years to come. Thank you so much, Sharon. this time would ask that Terry Rodriguez from Catholic Charities come forward. There you are. <laughs> Love the shirt. Dick. Did you bring the shirt? All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, September is National Kinship Month. And for those of you who haven't had the opportunity to experience kinship, um, it recognizes those who cared for and raised children, which is so important to our community. And their families where children reside with, either raised by their grandparents, other relatives, or other adults with whom they have a close family relationship. Just a few statistics, 43% of local kinship families identified as grandparents. The rest identified as relatives or friends. 49% of kinship families were caring for children between the ages of zero and five. So think about that. The research says that if you can get these children into family or close relatives, and family friends, then they will always be connected. And so I think we should be forever grateful to those people who are willing to take on that challenge, particularly after they've raised their own. So for you, Terry, we have today for Catholic Charities a special recognition, National Kinship Care Month in Lubbock, and we recognize you all and ask that all the people of Lubbock who have worked tirelessly to make and sustain extended family connections for children in need will recognize you all during this month. It's dated this 20th day of September, 2022. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, come on yeah. up. Yes. If, if you're with the kinship group, <laughs> it's possible if it wasn't for our kinship families and Catholic charities, yeah, it's come on very up. important for us. So come on up here, families. <laughs> it's okay. You can see these are just some numbers. <laughs> Cynthia Quintanilla. 
Paulette Chambers. <laughs> Candace Torres. Mary Lucy Fuentes. Esperanza Rodriguez. And who are you ladies? Olivia. Are you here with your with oh, with, 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 okay. okay. All right. I'm the second okay. cousin. Very good. And I'm her mama. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're going to take a picture. Do we need to do something cheese. different? Cheese, right? <laughs> Thank you all for that. At this time, I'm going to get, I invited several Hispanic leaders from the community. So if you will start coming up and see that circle in the front, that's where everybody needs to stand or near there. So come on up. Come on. Up. Thank you. Come on up, Courtney. They're being shy, but. And these are just a few, but. September 15th through October 15th is Hispanic Heritage Month, which celebrates the histories, our culture, and contributions to the Hispanic Americans have had in our communities. Hispanic Americans play an important role in all aspects of American society. And just so you know, Lubbock is 37%, and there's, there they come. Come on, Victor. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I like to be prompt, so get up here. Thank you, everybody. And we come from very different backgrounds. We have folks that are Puerto Rican, Mexican, Spanish, Colombian. We have a little bit of everything today. And I'm so glad politically we have different everything. And it really just makes me proud that we even have the multi-generational. But we are so connected. And as you saw like earlier, Mark was born at Kelby K. Just kidding, Mark. <laughs> He started um, the book club or the book program. We have Mr. McAllister here who was part of Kelby K Mac. And then Kelby K was here and Sharon worked at Kelby K and KCBD. And we're all so interconnected in so many regards. But the Hispanic community, I take so much pride because one of the things about us is that we believe in family, community, and we believe in empowering those behind us. So when we get climbing up that ladder, we pull our arms back and pull up. And as you can see, very different backgrounds, but that's what it's all about for me. And I'm so glad. I wish Cynthia would have come on up here as well, because. but thank you all for being here. And now, therefore, we, the mayor and city council of the great city of Lubbock, do hereby recognize and celebrate his September 15th through October 15th as Hispanic Heritage Month in Lubbock and ask all citizens to join us in celebrating and acknowledging Hispanic American culture, heritage, contributions in our city, pride, all across Lubbock and the United States. And you know what? Today, you get to be Hispanic. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I had to have fun with it, y'all. But I appreciate y'all. And I'm going to let my daughter, who is right here, just moved to Lubbock four months ago. Yay! And she's going to accept this on our behalf. And we're so glad that you all get to experience our pride. And thank you so much. Please join in our celebration this month. Okay, the next segment of our program this afternoon is the recognition of our board appointments. The City of Lubbock has almost 50 boards and commissions that uh, carry out various roles in our community, some of which make recommendations to the council and others just fill a need that we have. And so uh, before I get started, I would invite anyone who might be interested. It's a great way to get involved. Um, 
you haven't submitted, if you're interested in getting involved and you haven't submitted an application, you can do so on the city website. Just find the city secretary's page and you can apply for a board and commission appointment there and indicate your preference when you do so. So I, we've got several here, just kind of give you a flavor of the variety of boards and commissions we have. And so I'll call these, um, the groups of these boards up one at a time and present them with a certificate acknowledging their service. Then we'll get a picture and move on to the next. And so we're gonna start this afternoon with um, the Appointments Advisory Board. I believe all I've got here today is Mr. Keith Patrick. Keith, where are you? I can't see you. Okay, we'll get Keith his certificate. <laughs> okay, next is Building Board of Appeals. So we'll try this list. Mr. C.J. Marquette, excellent. <clears throat> Mr. Manuel Flores, Ms. Christina Weir, <coughs> and Mr. Ricky Lawrence. Next up is uh, Civic Lubbock. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Roger Carr up, please. Roger. <laughs> Miss Beverly Macbeth. <laughs> and Miss Emily Wilkinson. Emily? He's already appointed. Yeah, we don't recognize. Where are you? All right, Douglas, where are you? I can't even see you in the audience. So we're just recognizing Douglas for his continued service on the Civic Lubbock Board. And no, you do not get an opportunity to speak. Next, we'd like to recognize Veterans Advisory Board, Mr. Jeremy Cedeno. Jeremy, are you here today? Jeremy? Okay, we'll get... Yeah, okay, good. We'll get Jeremy's certificate to him. Uh, next is uh, recognizing service to a couple of our PIDs. Now, City of Lubbock's loaded with acronyms and that the Public Improvement District. First one up is the, the Public Improvement District for Bell Farms. Uh, Mr. Tracy Moore. Lastly is Quincy Park Public Improvement District Advisory Board, Mr. Nathan King. Is Mr. King here today? Mr. King. Okay, we'll get Mr. King's certificate to him. And then I believe that's it, although I'm getting some whispering from the galley. Let... Nope. I think that's got it. Now, it's my honor to uh, present uh, an employee 
award. Uh, our employees, and I can say this for I think all the council members, but especially for those four of us who are new, we've learned how great the employees in this city are. <laughs> and uh, I can probably say honestly that the most important department in this whole city is solid waste <laughs> because <laughs> Those are the emails I get. You know, people want to know that their trash is picked up in a timely manner. And we have got a very dedicated staff of people in that department working to solve some of the issues that we have, and they are on it. And so I've got a real honor to uh, I recognize April Chavez. So, April, are you here? Come forward. April's the management assistant for our public works department, and uh, believe me when I say that she plays a very important role in making that department uh, run. And uh, she recently earned a professional administrative certification of excellence, and I'm pleased to present her with a special recognition for her initiative and commitment to her profession, April Chavez, and encourage all citizens uh, to join us in thanking her for her dedication and service to the city of Lubbock and the residents of this great city. All right, Robert Flores, where are you, Robert? Come on up, Robert. Come on, Robert. Come on, Robert. <laughs> We're just going to talk about you for about 30 minutes. You okay with that? Yeah. <laughs> He's already turning red. So it's not every day you have people that work a full shift, work all day long out in the heat, and then turn around and do something good. And this is the kind of stuff that matters in our city. And I'll tell you, this is what sets Lubbock, America apart from so many other places, is men like this. Because he finds a check written as he's working um, at the end of the day and decided, you know what, I'm going to take this check to him personally. And that's really it. He found a check. He picked it up. He took the time of his own personal time and took it to the person and delivered it to them. And they were so grateful they posted it on social media because that's what we do, right? <laughs> and it went viral and people were like, I can't believe somebody would take the time out of their day to do that. And that's Robert. That's what people do all day here in our, in our city. They do kind things because kindness feeds upon kindness and it turns our community into that special community that we know it is. Hardworking folks hardworking people that do kind things for others, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And that's what Robert did. So it's my honor to present him with a special recognition for his selfless and caring act for something that seemingly may be small to him was big to somebody else and what seemingly small to others is big to the city and to our community. So Robert, uh, now therefore me, the mayor, joined by the city council and the great city of Lubbock, do hereby recognize you, Robert Flores, and encourage citizens to join us in thanking you not only for your dedication to our city and to your hard work that you do daily, but to the continued success of our great department, Parks and Rec. And just again, thanking you and recognizing you for such a simple act that turned in such a big event. We are very grateful to you, Robert. At this time, I would ask that Sergeant Chris Payne, Officer Stacy Garcia, Officer John Murray, and Officer Steve Fulgham come forward. And if Lieutenant Jason Lewis is here, come forward as well. Don't know if he is. These four officers traveled to Uvalde to help after the tragic school shooting this summer. They helped with the funeral services, provided aid to parents, and patrolling as needed. But it's a little more in depth than that. They left here uh, June 1st. They stayed until June the 6th of this year. And while they were there, they served as protection during the funeral services of the children. 
and provided aid to parents laying their children to rest. The team worked closely with eight of the families of the victims, working eight funerals in four days. Our officers have a lot of duties. This one is above and beyond the call. They belong to the special response group that is headed by Lieutenant Jason Lewis. I cannot imagine what they experienced during those days and those eight funerals. So it is fitting to recognize and thank the Lubbock Police Department Special Response Group for their unwavering commitment to the protection and support of all. While this was an assignment that took its toll on each officer, this was an experience each say they would do over and over again. A testament to the men and women who make the Lubbock Police Department the exemplary agent that it is. Now therefore, we the Mayor and City Council of the Great City of Lubbock do hereby recognize LPD's Special Response Group in Lubbock and express our support of the men and women in this group and in the Lubbock Police Department who go above and beyond the call of duty every day dated this 20th day of September, 2022. This is why being interconnected is so important, because I had a family member that was a victim in Uvalde. And it's nice to know that our citizens, our employees, made an impact there, because it made an impact with us. So thank you, officers. At this time, I'd like to ask Sam Hurt to come up, please. Sam, how long have you been with the city of Lubbock? Uh, six years. Awesome. Well, this is what's so exciting is that Sam Hurt is with Lubbock's Building Safety Department. In August, Sam received his residential building inspector credentials. We love to see our employees grow. So we want to thank him for his service to the city, and it's my pleasure to read this proclamation. And it reads, now therefore, we, the mayor and city council of the great city of Lubbock, do hereby recognize Samuel Hurt and encourage all citizens to join us in thanking him for the dedicated and, and service to Lubbock and his continued success in Lubbock's development services. And it is dated this 20th day of September by the mayor and city council. Thank you so much, Sam. to call Chris Mandrell up, please. Chris? He's on a city bus. He's on a city bus. Well, then I'm just going to go ahead and tell you about Chris, even though he's not here. You know, first I'll just say about city bus is city bus is uh, important to many people in our community. It's the difference between getting to work or getting groceries or being able to care for a family member. And Chris leads that group and we're gonna recognize Chris today. And I'm sorry he wasn't able to be with us, but he was recently named uh, to one of Mass Transit's top 40 
under 40. And so it's a great recognition for Chris. We're grateful for what he does for our community and city bus, and we'll be sure and get him this certificate. Let me invite the members of the Vital Statistics team to come forward now, if you're here. I'll probably say this many times, but again, as a new member of the council, I don't oftentimes realize what all the people who are employees of this city do, and this is one of the departments, boy, I didn't realize how much paper they have to handle. And it is amazing how well they do it. And they do it so well that they have received, um, again, this is not the first time, the five-star exemplary award from the Department of State Health Services for how they handle vital statistics. And I think that is really a credit to uh, Becky Garza and her team there in that department and how they handle everything. We're extremely proud of the work this group does for Lubbock citizens, and it's my honor. A special honor to present them with this recognition for their hard work and keeping all the paperwork and all the vital statistics uh, taken care of. Thank you very much. Now, we, this mayor and city council, will uh, recognize the City of Lubbock Vital Statistics Department, encourage all citizens to join us in celebrating this city department for whose job performance exceeds the highest standards of their profession. Becky's just going to stay up here because she's been so exemplary. We just keep going with awards to her. <laughs> so Lubbock, Lubbock's Office of the City Secretary received not only this through Vital Statistics, but also the Office Achievement of Excellence Award from the Texas Municipal Clerks Association. That means, Jimmy, hold it up. So think about all the cities that we have in the state of Texas. They're one of 38 that received this honor. It's very prestigious, yes. It's all those fun things we all like to do, like compliance and paperwork and signatures and governing standards, but that's what they do to keep us in line, and it's necessary to fulfill these duties. And from all of us at the City Council, every one of us, we're gr very grateful to your office uh, and for the tremendous work that you do, which is further shown by this extremely um, prestigious award for the state. So thank you very much. Uh, so again, we, the Mayor and City Council of the City of Lubbock, encourage all citizens to thank our City Secretary's office that sometimes goes so unnoticed. Uh, and thank you for the continued work you provide to the residents, the city staff, and the city council. Thank you very much, Becky, and your staff. Fred Cantu, are you here? I hope. There he is. Okay, Fred, stand over here, over here a little closer. Okay, there you go. All right. This year, Lubbock Preston Smith International Airport Police Department's Sergeant Fred Cantu completed the FBI's Law Enforcement Executive Development Association, called LEEDA, LEDA, three-part leadership course generally called the Leadership Trilogy. Okay. That's meant to enhance law enforcement leadership through training, education, and networking among police professionals 
across the United States. So, how hard was it, Fred? Pretty hard. Pretty hard. <laughs> okay. Uh, they, uh, the courses make up uh, the trilogy uh, intense and challenging four and a half day long programs uniquely crafted to prep officers and first responders with hands on knowledge of the ever changing world they're called to protect. So, Sergeant Cantu. We want to recognize you for completion of that program and for your uh, service at the Lubbock International Airport. And we are asking all the citizens of Lubbock today to join in thanking you in your unwavering service to Lubbock and wish, it, wish you a happy continued service throughout your career. Thank you so much. Dated this 20th day of September 2022 and signed by all of us. Okay. <laughs> So what do y'all think for our first special recognition ceremony? Pretty darn good, right? <laughs> Not only that, but don't leave, Mr. McAllister. This is directed to you. We just gave you a whole bunch of stories. So media, make sure that you take it and run. But I, that's it. You can leave, Greg. Thank you. <laughs> Well, it's just, to me, I think it's just so nice that we came together, and don't get me wrong, this is the most citizens we've had in the city council chambers in a very long time, so thank you for being here. But it really is special, because we get to celebrate each other as citizens, and we want to celebrate one more person, and Dave, if I say your last name wrong, please, Dave, please correct me, Dave Pascal? What is it? Pascal, thank you. And I, I know who Dave is, but you know, now I know the name, last name right. And let me ask you, how many years have you been working for the city? Four and a half. Awesome, thank you, Dave. Well, Dave at the Lubbock, Dave works at the Lubbock Preston Smith International Airport, and he earned his airport certification, employee, airfield operations certificate. And as you can tell by all that long length of words and sentence, that's an important thing. So this is a comprehensive professional certified program for airfield operations personnel at every airport in the, in the country, that is. And Lubbock is grateful to have experts like Dave keeping the airport safe and operational. And it really does mean a lot that you take the time to do this kind of stuff, Dave. So we appreciate you. And now, therefore, we, the mayor and the city council of the great city of Lubbock, do hereby and recognize Dave and encourage all citizens to join us in thanking him for his dedication and service to Lubbock residents and wish him continued success in his profession. Thank you so much. And we're going to stand over there. Okay, it's my honor to wrap this program up today. We have our last and very special recognition, Lily Hearn. Where are you, Lily? Come on up here. <laughs> Do what? You got anyone here with you? Did you Do you, you want anybody up here with you? He's hurt. No. Okay. <laughs> you, I, as far as I'm concerned, you can have whoever you want up here. Yeah. So, I think this is pretty amazing. Uh, Lily has been a dispatcher, and she's retiring from the Lubbock PD, and she's worked for the city of Lubbock for 34 years. She served the citizens of Lubbock for a long time, and we're grateful for everything that she has done. 
Lily has been a voice at LPD. She will be missed greatly, but we're also very excited for your retirement. So, I just, we just want you to know that we, now we, the mayor and the city council, the great city of Lubbock, we do hereby recognize Lily Hearn and encourage all citizens to join us in thanking her for her dedication and service to Lubbock and wish her a happy and healthy retirement that always allows her plenty of memories with her families in the years to come. It's dated today and it's signed by all the members of the Lubbock City Council. Congratulations, Lily. Lily, congratulations once again. Uh, we, we are certainly grateful for your service. And so with that, I think it's important that we did this in less than 60 minutes. Uh, we're adjourned. Thank you all for coming. And I believe there's some refreshments out in, out in the foyer.